Since 2002, the Indian government has been constructing its first ever rail line uh, through its disputed territory of Jammu and Kashmir. Prime Minister Modi has recently declared the project to be a national priority of the Indian government um, and has stated that when complete, the railway will win over the hearts and minds of the people of Jammu and Kashmir through development. Last summer, in July 2016, we traveled to Jammu and Kashmir to trace the tracks of India's first ever rail line through Kashmir. Um, the plan was to start in Barmula, which is a town known as the Gateway of Kashmir, just a few hundred kilometers from Pakistan, um, and ride the train from Barmula through Kashmir, 154 miles back to New Delhi, um, speaking with Kashmiris who take the train daily to see whether the new rail line uh, really does make them feel closer to India, as Prime Minister Modi has promised, or whether it's just a ploy of the Indian government to keep Kashmir closer in its grip. But on July 8th, the day we rode the first segment of the train from Baramula to Srinagar, an Indian army officer shot a young militant named Burhan Wani. Uh, who was the alleged leader of Hezbollah Mujahideen. The 22-year-old militant was an internet sensation for young Kashmiris um, and inspired the Azadi or Freedom Movement, uh, mostly from social media. Wani's death set off some of the worst fighting that Kashmir had seen in decades. Um, young men and women took to the streets uh, to pelt stones at Indian army officers and in a single night, uh, over 30 were shot dead. By the end of the summer, nearly 200 were killed and thousands blinded by these pellets from these shotguns that Indian Army officers used to disperse the crowds. So the question of whether the train uh, would bring Kashmiris closer to India became irrelevant in less than an hour. All trains were suspended indefinitely um, along with local businesses, internet, and cell service. Um, every street was on lockdown, and we ended up taking a car out of Kashmir a few weeks later um, at 12.30 a.m. when there was no curfew, um, and reboarding the train in Jammu, uh, where we got a very different side of the story uh, from Hindu um, majority uh, living in Jammu, uh, where Wani was no longer known as a martyr, but was rather uh, referred to as a terrorist. By the time we returned to New Delhi in late July, uh, the situation had really escalated. India and Pakistan were making gestures towards war, and 17 Indian soldiers were killed in a surprise attack on a village called Uri, and India retaliated by conducting surgical strikes on Pakistan. But despite international pressure to resolve the Kashmir conflict, um, Kashmir still remains one of the most militarized zones in the world. And our hope is that through this story, people will gain a little bit of a better understanding of how Kashmir remains trapped in this forever war.